So in the previous two videos, we covered our first supergroup within the eukaryotic domain. And that first supergroup was Excavata. The next supergroup that we're going to cover, which also consists of a bunch of different protists, are the Sarclade. And we'll entitle this next flowchart SAR, S-A-R, all capital, clade 1. Now, the SAR clade consists of three separate subdivisions um, that are important to understand, and we'll classify and characterize those subdivisions um, in the next couple of videos. So we'll first uh, get this out of the way. What does SAR consist of? SAR consists of the following uh, types of different protists. Consists, let me rewrite that, consists of stromenopiles. We'll go over each of these in the next couple of videos. Uh, alveolates, alveolates, and also lastly the rhizarians. So lots of terms to remember for this lecture. Stromenopiles, alveolates, rhizarians, capital S, capital A, capital R, thus the name SAR clade. So this is our second supergroup. Let's not lose focus of that. Second supergroup of the protists, um, which are a type of eukaryote. So we'll go over each of these. Um, the first one that I want to go over is the stromenopiles. So we'll subtitle this flowchart stromenopiles. And we'll do what we've been doing constantly for these protists is characterizing. Um, for the stromenopiles, there are actually three subtypes to remember, and we'll go over each of these. The stromenopiles are characterized by the following. Characterized by, uh, they actually have a hairy flagellum. When you look at this under a microscope, you will see finger, small finger-like microscopic um, projections that are coming out of the flagellum, and also a shorter, smoother flagellum. So they have two, actually. They have two flagellum, one of which has this hairy characteristic, and the other one is shorter and smoother in its structure. So this is actually shown very nicely in figure 28.9, uh, just to get a visualization of the flagella that we're studying. Now, of the three types, we're actually only going to be going to cover one in this video and the other two in the next video. The one that we'll cover in this video are the diatoms. The diatoms are a very, very unique type of protist, a very unique type of stromenopile found within the sarclade, found within the protists, found within the eukaryotes, um, and they are shown in figure 28.10. Um, the reason why they're so unique is because, first of all, they're the first time that we're going to be covering a protist that is photosynthetic in nature, or truly photosynthetic at least. Um, it's a photosynthetic unicellular algae. And this is a, an important no, a point to understand, that algae, a lot of people assume and think that algae, uh, they think of green algae all the time. And they think that algae are thus going to be some type of plant. For the most part, almost all the algae on planet Earth, which is found in water, is photosynthetic, it's unicellular, and it's also protist in terms of its classification. It is not a plant, um, and it's found within the protist group of organisms of eukaryotes. So that's something to remember about algae. We're going to be seeing algae show up constantly as we move forward through these next couple of protists. Now, diatoms, we have to figure out what they're characterized by. Diatoms are characterized by... They're very interesting cell walls. So they have a very, very characteristic cell wall. Their cell wall is important to them because it actually has a glass-like appearance. If you look at the figure, you'll actually see this glass-like appearance uh, very, very clearly. Glass-like appearance. And this is due to the fact that they actually have silicon, which is a, a key, key component, key molecule, found in anything that looked glass-like, silicon dioxide. That's the molecule that really establishes itself as that glass-like molecule, and it's found within the organic matrix of this organism. So we all have an organic matrix within us, like our lipid bilayer is full of organic molecules, and it's a co combined to give us a strong, a very diverse matrix. 
The key thing within the diatoms is that within their matrix, they have silicon dioxide, which gives them a glass-like appearance, and that glass-like appearance is exemplified within their cell walls. Now, um, the cell walls actually look as if they have two overlapping parts. And the figure does great justice to this, and um, I'll try to describe it as best I can. There are two overlapping parts to this cell wall, so much so that this actually resembles a petri dish. Resembles a petri dish. So if you've ever seen a petri dish before, there's a top and a bottom. If you close that petri dish with the top and the bottom and look at it from the side point, from a side view, you will see that there's an overlap between the two plastic parts, the glass-like parts at least. And that's exactly what's seen in the diatoms. They possess a petri dish structure essentially. And the reason why is because this is a strong structure. It's incredibly strong and it prevents crushing. Diatoms are constantly uh, in a uh, sort of a chaotic cellular environment because of the fact that they're found in water. And water, there's going to be constant pushing and shoving in terms of the waves and all of the action that happens in these marine and freshwater environments, whatever it may be. So there's a great possibility of in, an enormous amount of crushing. These diatoms have the capability to prevent that, so much so that your textbook actually gives an interesting example in terms of how strong these diatoms are. They say that if you imagine a table with four legs, general table, whatever general table you can think of, and you put an elephant on top of it, the legs themselves represent this cell wall of the diatom. That table will not break because the legs are able to withstand the elephant's weight. So if you put a diatom and magnified it all the way up to the level of a table, that's how much pressure it can absorb. That's how much crushing it can absorb um, in terms of that analogy that we mentioned. So I thought that was a really nice thing that your textbook did to give us a very important visualization of just how powerful these diatomic um, cell walls are. Finally, last thing to understand about diatoms is that they are involved in a process known as a diatomaceous earth. Diatomaceous earth. Essentially, when you have these strong cell wall structures, this glass-like appearance, these overlapping parts, this petri dish looking cell wall, you actually, when you die as a diatom, will just sink down towards the bottom of the ocean. And what happens in the diatomaceous earth scenario is that the material that sinks down can actually be harvested by us as humans. Material is harvested from ocean floors. And this is seen uh, all throughout the ocean because diatoms are found all throughout the ocean, and thus their dead remains, their, their diatomaceous parts, these overlapping parts are just going to be excavated. Um, it's usually because of an accumulation. So these diatoms usually live together, and then there's going to be an accumulation of fossilized diatom cell walls. Fossilized diatom cell walls walls. And when you have this fossilized structure, this means that they're of course dead, and then you can harvest this dead material. Um, and in terms of use for humans, we can actually, it, this material is usually mined because it's so strong, we have to use mining mechanisms to actually excavate it. And it's used as a filters, used as filters uh, for human use at least. So this is something I would remember because of the relevancy to us as humans. Also remember the fact that they have this interesting and characteristic cell wall um, and that covers the diatoms. In the next video we'll be covering the golden algae which is the second of the three golden algae and we'll also be covering brown algae. And that covers our initial understanding of the stromenopiles. To reiterate, diatoms are a stromenopile. Stromenopiles are part of the sarclade. The sarclade is a type of a protist, and the protists are a type of eukaryote.